has Judges Familiar. Yeah, and that was and something I deck. thought was great. You play, like, especially against a lot of these decks that are, um, that are trying to, uh, to counter, I mean, not sorry, not, like some of these control decks that are just trying to play a lot of non-creature spells. You've got Judges mm -hmm. Familiar and you've got Thalia, like, on top of that. It's just, just another, uh, a nice a kind of, yeah, matchup for, for this deck. Or a nice way to kind of sure it's, up that matchup. It's also a real nice card against a lot of the gen decks that are playing this weekend because they happen to all be sort of adapting Bonfire of the Damned. William yeah. is among them, but uh, ju it was not like a staple to be Bonfire of the Damning people. Mm -hmm. But now, today, like, there's just been a lot of gen with Bonfire of the Damned. It's, the card's been very popular, and Cursed Catcher's a pretty reasonable card against Bonfire yeah, of the Damned. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, underway... Overground Tomb, and then we're paying two life, it looks like, for a Temple Garden on Gabriel's side. Not Could it shocked. be? <laughs> oh, it's just an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Just an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Not a Judge's Familiar. Way less exciting. But also a much better start for Gabriel. Yeah. Being on the draw and having a Pilgrim, good feeling. You know you're going to get the jump on your opponent. Hopefully be able to drop a Power 3, maybe a 2 and a 1. Kind of depends on what you expect. Against Jund, I think it's a little risky to start jamming just all the guys out there, but... Something, something tough and durable would be nice. Yeah, so William just goes ahead and plays a Far Seek. Pretty much the default turn one play from the Jun decks. I'm not turn one play, I mean first play. It would be nice if you could play a Far Seek on turn one, but default first spell from the Jun decks. Interestingly, Gabriel's list does not include uh, Loxodon Smiters, which is a, a pretty typical green-white card these days, but it's one of the better big guys against Jun because there aren't a lot of spells that, like, really easily remove it and it's immune to stuff like bonfire so also nice if you get hit with like Rakdos is returned if people were very playing true, it main deck very true Gabriel looks like he's got a Silverblade Paladin and a Thalia in there uh, some lands he's got a lot of lands it looks like or maybe I'm just and seeing a Knight of Glory. he's, he's got, got at least two planes there we're gonna go with Silverblade Paladin uh, I'm not sure if we're pairing or not. I pro I assume that we're not. I'm not. A I'm not really sure on that though. Yeah, I don't think he paired them. He didn't make any indication that he did. Doesn't seem like a very strong pair. William is probably just gonna kill that and play and plan to play a Thrag Tusk on the next turn. No, no pairs. Pair. Correct. When you're the Jun deck here, you mostly just want to make sure your opponent doesn't get ahead because the Jun deck is actually not that great at catching up. Yeah. It's, it's big on parity. So. Well, he's going to go for a far seek, and then I imagine a Dread War if he's going to make this line instead of the Sever. Yeah, again, it's similar to, uh, to a typical control deck at this point in its game plan where it's just like, just, just trying to get to the late game. Not even the late game, but, you know, kind of like a later mid-game. Jen just wants to get to the point where he can cast all of its spells because yeah. his spells are pretty good. Oh, it's so. an abrupt decay, not a dread war. Same difference, yeah, however. Yeah, that'll work as well. That means he's going to pass and he could potentially accrue some value if Gabriel decides to get real frisky with a rancor. At a minimum, he knows Gabriel will have to show him the next creature he's playing because Gabriel's certainly not going to attack with an unpaired uh, Soul Blade Paladin. That would be silly. It would. And we have a Plains from Gabriel. Charm Selesnia Charm, yep. He's got Selesnia Charm, Plains. Couldn't quite see what else. Let's see, we've got four mana. Sublime Archangel, incoming. Oh, we That's had such a card. big dreams. Yeah. Our dreams are gone from us. Well, being left with a Sublime Archangel isn't the worst thing. It's not the worst. William's probably going to have to spend his turn severing that card because playing Drag Tusk and then getting hit by Sublime Archangel is not exactly a profitable exchange yeah. of resources. Yep. Sever the Bloodline and a Deathrite Shaman. And Gabriel left with just an Avacyn's Pilgrim and his three lands. Yeah. Note the power of being on the play in this matchup. This game would look a lot different if Gabriel was leading, but because William was able to get Farseek uh, against the Avacyn's Pilgrim, he's been pretty much just able to match Gabriel play for play without taking a significant amount of damage. Yeah, the later this game goes, the more it favors William. At this point, uh, Gabriel can't even hasn't even been able to present a significant threat uh, 
that you know it hasn't been able to survive an entire turn cycle. I think he's considering going Night of Glory, Night of Glory here and just getting in for three. It's a pretty risky play because if your opponent has Bonfire of the Damned, the game is over on the spot. But realistically, if your opponent has Bonfire of the Damned, you're probably not going to win this game. Yeah. Like, you're not in a good spot. Well, there's knight number one. The alternative and, yeah. options are, are not nearly as good. Yep. Knight number two, so. I like this play. Going to go ahead and attack for three with an Avacyn's Pilgrim. He's not going to kill himself. <laughs> you, got, yeah. you do got to attack. <laughs> Another death right shaman for William. Now William has an Olivia Darren, which is a reasonable card against his board, but not a fantastic one. Obviously it's a black creature, so that's yeah. not exciting. He's probably just gonna frag to us. Yep. And he does. Come on up to the stage, we are ready to start once again. Another draft nine. Come on up to the stage. This is where we really wish we had that Sublime Archangel. It would do some work. Gabriel flooding a little bit here. Yeah, plays a forest. What's that? Really we know he has Selesnya Charm. He has Selesnya Charm and Thalia, I believe. Okay. Uh, he really needs a township. In this situation, township could break the stalemate in his favor pretty quickly. He would only need to activate it twice, right, to get past the Thragtusk? Yeah. Like oh, Precinct it Captain, was, not yeah. Thalia. Alright, well that's significantly better if we can get it going, but significantly worse if we can't, because it doesn't protect us from bonfire. <laughs> William checking for the bonfire, oh, yeah. finds another Olivia. That's gotta be disheartening for Gabriel to see too, because he's like, oh yeah. man, he has it. Yeah, he, he plays <laughs> he's bonfire. He's not on mortars, it's he's on coming, bonfires. Yeah. They exist, they're real. <laughs> So uh, Olivia comes down alongside yep. a death ray shaman for William, now, and he just passes back. We really needed a township that turn to protect our precinct captain from just getting Olivia to death. Avacyn's Pilgrim, not not that attached. Looks like we drew a Soul Blade Paladin, so we have something slightly better to Olivia to death. But this also will enable Gabriel to make an attack this turn. Looks to be soul bonding with the Knight of Glory. Yeah, that seems reasonable. One of the Knights of Glory. And he attacks. Two Exalted Triggers. So that's a 4-3 Double Striker. Also known as Serious Business. Yeah, for sure. Thrag Tusk is going to get in the way. He's good at that. Elephant, you. Yep. And... Are we going to see a Celestia Charm here? He's thinking about it. He is. Yeah, uh, looks like Celestia Charm, plus two, plus two, and trample. That's, that's pretty good with your double striking creature. That's big game. Drag Tusk is big game, too. Yeah. Like, literally, big game. So that puts our guy to six power against three toughness and going twice. Yep. That's, that's nine damage uh, going through. <laughs> yeah. Puts William from 20 to 11. Or from. Huh? My bad. There we go. Yeah, from 20 to 11. And now, uh, he's probably feeling a lot less comfortable than he was a second ago. Does have a beast as a consolation prize. Does have a beast, and he has a lot of chumps. Uh, obviously, as long as Knight of Glories are alive, the death rate Shamans are not going to be that functional as chump blockers. The uh, problem being that Gabriel's probably going to want to rely on his Precinct Captain, thanks to its first strike, once the Soul Blade Paladin dies. Looks like we have another Olivia and an Abrupt Decay in William's hand. One of those is not useful, the other one is. Olivia's going to kill the Soul Blade Paladin while Gabriel is tapped out and hellbent. So now Gabriel's yeah. stuck on Precinct Captain offense. And Olivia swinging in for 5, going to knock Gabriel to uh, 13. Yep. Currently ahead in the race. If we have a way to get past that Beast Token, then we might be able to do some work with our Knight of Glories. But the green Beast Token is definitely going to prevent any damage. The problem is, like, the, when the Precinct Captain starts attacking, the Death Red Shamans are going to be blocking and not the Beast Token, so... So, Precinct Captain coming over, Exalted triggers twice, Death Ray Shaman gets in the way. Now, will William aggressively remove an instant, or will he just remove a creature and try to float the life while leaning on a living? Against a white-green deck, I'm going to be pretty inclined to just go for the life, because... Yeah. 
how are they going to kill my Olivia anyway? <laughs> right. <laughs> that card's unbeatable. And it wasn't clear. I think he removed a spell. Did he remove Selesnya Charm? I believe he removed a Selesnya Charm as well. So William's getting aggressive. This will give him the opportunity to turn his clock into a two-turn clock. Which will let him kill the opponent one turn faster. But I think it opens him up to you know getting got by a couple of different things. None of them are super scary. Sublime Archangel is actually the only one that's like kind of horrifying because it would put the game back to a stalemated position. And Olivia grows twice. Oh, she's at seven, and now... Precinct Captain, Captain goes away, and Olivia bashes in for seven. Oh, he's sending the Beast Eight, token, nine, too. ten. Aggressive. And oh. uh, that may... We're going to block. Okay. Absence Pilgrim. Gets in the way. Yeah, I don't really think the attack with Beast Token is super necessary. We can't attack with our Knight of Glories as long as that Beast Token's there anyway. And like, William clearly doesn't think anything bad can happen to him, but funny thing about bad things. You, yeah. You never you, really see him coming most yeah. of the time. Yeah. We know his hand, he's got Abrupt Decay, Olivia, and a land. Yeah, and Olivia is a dead card. Abrupt Decay, unless he wants to hit his own guys, is a dead card. See, uh, back in my day, we had things like Might Evokes and Stonewood Invocation. Oh, yeah. We could legitimately threaten our opponent in this kind of a position, but Gabriel has access to no such crad. With the sixth land up, yeah, he scoops him up. Answer. Yeah, that was that was pretty rough the whole game, I think, for Gabriel. But he did yeah. seem like he he had a way. He uh, found he, a way in. Yeah. And uh, looking at his deck, yeah, he didn't, he didn't have a lot of outs from the position he was in at that point. Uh, beyond, like, a Sigarda to chump for a turn, he had very little going on. Moving into the sideboard, uh, I know Gabriel has said he's not a big fan of the Jun matchup, just generally. And yeah, that's uh, understandable. Like, all of their guys, all their, their, their entire deck is creatures that are bigger than, than his mm -hmm. in most cases. And removal for the guys that maybe are a little bigger or can match up well. The best so. piece of removal that Gabriel has access to is Oblivion Ring, but that's not very effective against Abrupt Decay dot deck. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I would be bringing those in if I were him. It might be necessary, just as a way to kill the evil that is Olivia Boldarin. Yeah, but of which there's a third copy in William's board. Not not exciting. You can bring in a couple more creatures, but like Centaur Healer and Rock Spade Mender aren't better than what you've already got going on, and I get the feeling those are for more aggressive strategies. Sure, yeah. Uh, so I think I, he won't be changing too many things, I imagine. This, the other Selesnya Charm going up to four, that seems fine. Yeah, it's Pithing, Needle, Pithing Needle's a way to deal with Olivia. That's true. Uh, I, could, I could see bringing in the one Pithing one Needle. One copy, yeah. It's pretty good value. And you know the Jun player could have some Planeswalkers. Uh, I think, yep, Garrick Primal Hunter in yeah. William's list, although Gabriel doesn't know which Garrick it is, or even if there's Garrick at all. So. Right. Kind of hard to figure out. Could and be Vraska. Rakdos Kirun is also a worthy target. Absolutely, yeah. He's just got one needle, but the uh, interesting thing about naming Olivia, it neuters the one in play, and any subsequent ones in their hand yep. are dead, and you're like, you know, like they're, they're stuck with a mediocre 3 3 flyer. And that, 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 that has, you know, the legend rule will, uh, will keep Certainly them from playing a thir the not second the or third card. So. William's list is pretty interesting. He came pretty heavily metagamed for the mirror with him and the control decks with a main deck slaughter games. Mm -hmm. And he, I imagine he's expecting Restoration Angels with those two main deck ultimate prices as well. Uh, those would have come in handy against Gabriel had he drawn them, but yeah, no rubbins. We just casually abrupt decayed him right out of the game. Yeah, abrupt decay and sever the bloodline yeah. took care of, uh, of anything that was super threatening. Post board, William's got just a ton of removal. He's yeah. got three, three more three dread, dread boar, a rolling templar. He another could bring Olivia. in Liliana, although I don't think that's very good. He does have another Olivia. Uh, beyond, beyond that... I think that's... Yeah, that's yeah. enough. I think just the Dreadboars and the Rolling Tumblers will be coming in. Mm -hmm. We'll cut that Slaughter Games for sure. No need to do any of that nonsense. Yeah. Um, beyond that, Deathrite Shaman is kind of weak in the matchup. It doesn't really block too many things super effectively. And unless you're planning to trade in combat, then you're not going to get a lot of use out of its various modes. Yeah. Uh, Garrick is really powerful if it's in play, but it's a little expensive. I could see, like, shaving one, something like that. Yeah, just to make room for some of these yeah. cheaper removal spells. Beyond that, he's just going to be leaning on Huntmaster, Thrag Tusk, and Bonfire of the Dan. Those are his big cards in the matchup. And if he draws two copies of any of them, it'll probably be enough to win, generally speaking. Yeah, just one Bonfire can be enough. Yeah. Uh, especially if you actually draw plenty it. Plenty of time, yeah. <laughs> Let's 
so looks like the players are shuffling each other's decks now, I think. Mm -hmm. Gabriel did just defeat John last round. Uh, he's familiar with the matchup. Not excited about the matchup, but familiar with it. Have you done any uh, deck techs today? Uh, we did a video deck tech with David Thomas talking about his reanimator list. How's he doing at this point? Do you know what his record is? I, last I checked, he was X1, but it's been a round or two since okay. I checked. Okay. Yep. Uh, we've been trying to get Gabriel actually in for a deck tech on his, uh, his white green aggro deck. It's a little different from the ones we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also had Tony Lay, who you just saw under yeah. the, the camera with his chromatic lantern deck. His rounds have been going very long, but I've been trying to get him for a deck tech. Yeah. So yeah, those are that's the five color control decks mm -hmm. rounds have been going along. Yeah, I know. Really, that's crazy. Criminal. <laughs> he had 15 minutes left in the round we watched. If yeah. you guys do want to see uh, some of the deck lists from the event, we have some coverage articles up that include them. Uh, I believe one of them is titled "Standard Not So Much." Yeah, uh, I discussing saw that. some of the more interesting decks in the field. Yeah, when uh, going into today, like I think I was expecting a lot more aggro mm -hmm. just because of the area that we're in like i yeah. think typically the Same. south is very you know especially uh mono red oriented if not you know just general aggro oriented but um i think it's been here to be honest like there were a lot of these aggressive players but they've been quickly kiboshed by uh auger bullish thrag tusk just all this nonsense yeah, yeah. it's tough to play an ag aggressive deck in a format where the probably most played card is gaining five life and putting blockers in the way. <laughs> yeah. Drag Tusk advocates playing exactly one kind of magic and it is not aggressive. Gabriel, not excited about his hand. I see, looks like three planes, a Soul Blade Paladin, some other cards. Uh, looks like an Oblivion Ring. Yeah, his hand's pretty slow. I think that's a Gavany Township on the left. So we've got four lands, no green mana. The middle card uh, looks green. I'm not really 100% sure on what it is. Could be Thrag Tusk. Could be Thrag Tusk. That seems like the most likely. So that was a real slow hand. Not what we're looking for. Throwing it back. Looks like William's good with his. Yeah. It's good discipline on a mulligan. It sucks to mulligan against Jun because it's such an attrition deck. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, when your hand's not going to win, you should generally mulligan it, regardless of how many lands and spells it actually has. Yeah. It's one of the subtler arts uh, in the mulligan. Mulliganing the hands that won't win, even though they look playable. Yeah. You it's... don't get bonus points for losing slowly, so <laughs> those hands are not good. Sometimes you lose pretty quickly, though. We saw Tony lay mulligan to four. It was four lands, and he got bashed in with uh, Ghost of St. Traft and an angel. Just did him in real Definitely quick. Happens. I, I won a mulligan to four just this week playing uh, Adam Pro's X deck. So, you know, they, there's, there are flip sides to it, I sure. should say. But uh, obviously, four cards, not where you want to be, generally speaking. Right, right. But it's also very possible to get four card hands that are actually just better than your sevens and sixes and five. So you've been playing Pro's X list pretty much? Yeah, I've been modifying it, tweaking it a little bit. Uh, not real happy with the Think Twices that he played. Those seemed pretty mediocre after playing with them a little bit. Um, I like the rewinds. I think I added them. I went to two Sphinxes Revelation. I'd yeah. like to get a third somehow, but I don't think that's reasonable quite yet. Um, I know he didn't like Syncopate. I kind of like including it in my mix because it changes your opponent's play a lot to have to respect Syncopate. So I want some, if not like a playset, but definitely some. Yeah. Oh, Gabriel Six is now what he's looking for. He's definitely disappointed. See if at least the planes, but I'm not sure I can... It looks yeah, very a similar to his last an Oblivion hand. Ring, a Thrag Tusk, and I think two somethings that he can't cast. I think they might have been two uh, Pilgrims, but I'm not sure. Well, that hand definitely can't win, so ship that one. Yeah. It was even worse than our seven. What do you think of the Prozac deck in general now that you've played it a bit? I think it's good. Uh, I really liked it upon sight because mm -hmm. I love Augur of Bolas and uh -huh. Rune Chainer Spike in conjunction. Like, Augur of Bolas is just one of my favorite cards to try and get value out of. 
I love to grind value, so. Yeah, it's funny because I, I liked auger at first, but I have come to dislike it because whiffing with it is just the worst. I'm like, I don't want to play cards that make me feel bad. I don't want to play a 1-3 that does nothing. It's funny because that's like, I, I'm known for being relatively tilty at times, <laughs> uh, but those that's like on my list of things that doesn't bother me. Like, yeah. I've whiffed on auger bullets tons of times. Never bothers me at all. I'm just like, oh, well, that's what that card does. That's how it works. Right. So I don't know. It just doesn't trigger my uh, my tilt reflex. I uh, would much rather have a court hussar. Oh, I think he had Temple Grins in his last hand that he mulliganed, actually. So it was a three lander with no, like, one or two, one, two, or three drop. This hand, significantly better. Although I thought that was a Temple Garden in his hand that he did not lead with. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't think that's Temple Garden. Oof. Nope, I guess it's not. Maybe, I can't imagine it's right Temple before. Garden at this yeah. point, yeah. So Gabriel just has planes and has since played nothing. What is that card then? Not land. Far seek from William just to rub it in a little bit. Like yep. I got lands. I got more lands. Lands for days. Oh I bet it's Ranker actually. That would make sense. Yep, Ranker. That's what it is, hundred percent. To the left of the absence pilgrim. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. So we got Rancor, two Selesnia Charms, and Avacyn's Pilgrim, and two other spells that I assume we can't cast since we didn't. Uh, yeah, finds a second planes, not really Looking at enough. our deck, I, I don't know if I'd have kept this hand either. We only have 12 green sources in our deck. So we're trying to hit one of those 12, like, off the top of the deck, and we get basically, like, two turns to do it at most. That's being generous. That's assuming your opponent isn't putting any pressure on you, and your opponent kept seven, so you probably can't really assume your opponent's doing nothing. Well... Huntmaster of the Fells for William. Yeah. Brings along with it a wolf and two life. Note that I'm not saying, like, Gabriel's multi four would have won this game. I'm just saying his multi five isn't going to win this game. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, Gavany Township is just really punishing Gabriel. Rough way to go out. Not Ooh. like this. Yeah. Not like this. Ravager of the Fells <laughs> makes an appearance. Yeah, looks like Gabriel's going to be dropping down a 12 life and on a short clock. Another Huntmaster? You don't say. Well, that's going to present lethal damage if Gabriel doesn't do something on his turn. Doesn't have to be much, but we do have to at least cast a spell. Looks like we're getting a wolf token. Any of you missed trigger pundits out there? If we don't cast a spell, we dead. Mm, that's it. Yeah, they, it's, it's Addison's Pilgrim. He's got all sorts of green spells in his hand. No green mana. Yeah. And scoops him up. Unfortunately for Gabriel Od Odom, his deck does not cooperate. Despite him giving it multiple chances, William Yao yeah. takes the match two games.